offering is the truth. Nothing more. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to episode six of Debunking Professor Dum Dave. Now, as you all know, in episode five, we debunked Professor Dum Dave's challenge number five and challenge number six. So in this episode, we're going to be debunking his challenge number seven. So let's go check out Professor Dumb Dave's challenge number seven. This time, I'd like to offer some challenges to you remaining few that are desperately clinging to this dying fad to derive some semblance of self-worth. Let's call them 10 Challenges for Flat Earthers. Number seven, what the hell is a lunar eclipse to you? Seriously, explain anything about a lunar eclipse. The things you say about solar eclipses are stupid enough, but at least you say something. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth gets between the sun and the moon. That's right, in between. These two objects are not perpetually above a flat plane, and you know it, which is why you're totally silent on lunar eclipses. And if you're going to propose that some other object besides the Earth is what obscures the moon, good luck trying to demonstrate its existence. Okay, the lunar eclipse seems to be the most difficult for Globers to understand and for most flat earthers to demonstrate. So I'm going to be demonstrating to you how a lunar eclipse takes place on a flat earth in this video. But before I do that, you need to understand, now most flat earthers understand this, that the moon is not a big solid rock. It, the moon is transparent, a transparent light, just as the book of Enoch says it is, which means it's basically nothing more than noble gases, which in the case of the moon, plasma. So before I demonstrate a lunar eclipse, I want to take you back to one of my previous videos where I explained to you how the noble gases of the moon work. Check it out. Now, let me show you how to light up noble gases with a Tesla coil. I want you to pay attention to the colors here, especially the neon. Okay, the first and second glass tube are helium and neon, which will admit a constant sky blue light when placed within the field. Now, neon will also emit red and yellow photons as well. The sky looks blue because it is blue. The photons are a specific frequency our eyes interpret as blue. So you have helium, neon, argon, krypton, and exonon. These are the noble gases that make up 1% of the air. So as you see, the sun creates the field, and the noble gases within this field create the light. You could say the sun governs the light, in other words. Now, as you can see here, the daylight and sunrise and sunset colors of neon, which is your uh, sky blues, your yellows, and uh, reds. Remember that, everyone. Sky blue, yellow, and reds. Look for them the next time you watch the sunset. Now, the moon is also made up of these noble gases. As you can see right here, the moon is transparent, which explains why you can see through one side of it as you see here. Remembering what I taught you before, the electromagnetic field of the sun is pulling on the fields of the earth as it passes over the earth, just as it pulls on the magnetic field of the moon as it passes it. Just like the Earth's light is transparent, but when you concentrate and intensify the discharge of photons, it becomes impossible to see through. As you can see here, the sun on one side of the moon is intensifying the discharge of photons, but you've been taught that it's reflecting the sun's light. But it's the electromagnetic field of the sun lighting up the photons being discharged from the moon gases making it impossible to see through like you can on the right side of it and therefore now you know how you get your moon phases as you can see here the sun is making its circuit 
around the right side of the moon now, then it's eventually going to be in front of it. Now, when it's directly in front of it, that's when you have your full moon. And as it works its way around its circuit, it will be passing on the left side of the moon, which will give you your third and fourth phase of the moon. So just like the gases in the sky or just like the gases in the moon, you can't see them until the sun intensifies them and discharges their photons. Which means Professor Armand R. Foster was right when he stated that the moon was made of plasma in 1965. ...related to thoughts of genius. Do you think or consider yourself to be a genius? No. I um, consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, Ten or eleven years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, a plasma phenomenon, a cosmic plasma, uh, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958 and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that the complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it, the soft landing attempts will all fail, that means that the mass of the moon is less, far less, than is currently assumed. It's in a different state of energy and it has far less mass. That means there is no more explanation for the tides. If the moon, for example, had only a thousandth part of its current mass, then the tides would only be two inches high and the conventional theories instead of sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out and a new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. But the moon is definitely, as I assert, a plasma, uh, this crisis. So it comes again to the age-old concept that truth is the guidance, the hope and the directive of the human mind and that man must strive to understand and to know the real nature of the world. Plasma, an ionized gas consisting of positive eons and free electrons and proportions resulting in more or less no overall electric charge. So, as you can see, like I said, the professor was right. Now, just in case you are still confused on how the transparent moon works with the sun, I'm going to demonstrate it for you as simple as I can demonstrate it. Okay, here, now check this out. Okay, so I'm going to step out back here for a second so you can see that this background is not fake. This is really what it looks like out back right now. Okay, now let's step back inside the screen door here. Now, here's what I want you to pay attention to. See how you still see the little playground there? But also at the same time, you see my face, my head, my hand through the playground or actually see the playground through my head and face. Now, let's say the playground is the sky above and my head and face are the moon, okay? So you see how my head and face are transparent? That's how the moon is at all times until the sun excites the photons in the gases of the moon. And when that happens, the light from the gases are so bright, you cannot see through them. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now let's use the energy of the sun. Okay, now you see how my face lights up so bright you can't see the playground through it. And if I move the sun to one side of my face, it lights up one side of my face, but the other side of my face is still transparent and you can see the playground through it. That's how the moon works. When the sun excites the photons, of the gases of the moon and that is how you can see through one side of the moon but not the other so now that you understand how the transparent moon works let's move on with demonstrating how the lunar eclipse works okay now remembering that an eclipse can only happen either on a full moon or a new moon a total eclipse takes place when the sun is 
very close to the moon and passing right over the moon, which would be a new moon. And I explained it in a previous video like this right here. Okay, the sun and moon are like the minute and the hour hand on the face of a clock, pretending that this face of this clock is the face of the flat earth. With the sun being the minute hand and the moon being the hour hand, the sun will eventually pass over the top of the moon just like the minute hand will eventually pass over the top of the hour hand, causing what we know as an eclipse, as you can see here. And like I said, the total eclipse can only happen with a new moon, which means the sun and moon are right there together. The sun passes right over the moon. And as the sun passes right over the top of the moon, that's where you get your uh, totality at. The, you can't see the sun because it's moving across the top of the moon, which excite the photons only on the top of the moon, therefore making it so bright, impossible to see through. But you can't see that brightness because it's facing the sun. The sun's passing over the top of it. We're seeing it from the bottom side, which is why we see blackness. But the lunar eclipse is totally the opposite. A lunar eclipse can only happen during a full moon, which means the sun is on one side of the flat disk earth and the moon is on the other. And they are not side by side like in a solar eclipse. So with the sun being on one side of the flat disk earth and the moon being on the other, that's kind of halfway right about what science tells you. You know, you got a full moon because the sun's directly in front of it on the other side of the earth. So on the side of the earth that's dark at nighttime, you can't see the sun's light because you're on the ground. But if you were way up in the sky where the moon's at, you would still see the sun's light because you would be up high enough to see across the flat plane of the earth. So like I said, even though you can't see the sun's light from the ground, you can still see the sun's light from the height of the moon. And therefore, that's how you get your lunar eclipse. The moon still has to cross the path of the sun's light, but from the opposite side of the flat disk Earth. And now I'm gonna demonstrate how that causes a lunar eclipse. Now, the lunar eclipse lasts about four hours. That's about how long it takes the moon to pass across the light of the sun as it's making its circuit around the flat disk earth now won't you pay attention watch this one more time okay now here we have the full moon which as you all know on the flat earth it makes its circuit clockwise just as the sun does okay but if the sun's on the other side of the earth it still has to cross the light of that sun now i'm going to show you what happens when it crosses the light of that sun on the other side of the earth now watch the shadow on the moon as we make our circuit around the earth we eventually cross over the path of the sun on the other side of the earth check out the shadow okay here's your lunar eclipse right here you see the shadow move up it stays on there for four hours till the moon passes back and then it goes off the other side of it. Same thing here with the lunar eclipse. See how it comes up the left side? It stays on the moon for four hours and then it comes off the right top side. Same thing here, once again, comes up the left, shadow of darkness for four hours, then then boom, it comes back up the right top side of the moon. One more time, check it out. Then we have darkness across the moon for four hours, then bam, it goes right back off the other side. And that can only happen with a transparent moon making a circuit around a flat earth. And therefore, come on, you guys say it with me. Debunking Professor Dumb Dave's number seven challenge. And bringing us to the end of episode six. But everyone join me in episode seven as we debunk Professor Dumb Dave's challenge number eight. Everyone, thanks for watching. Have a good evening and God bless. All I'm offering is the truth.